How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Today we have a warning from Will Clemente, a short-term warning to be clear because he is very bullish on crypto long term, but he does have a short-term warning. I also want to cover a couple other things that I didn't cover during the Bitcoin conference because honestly there's just so much going on. It was hard to to even see everything that was happening. And one of those things is probably the most bullish thing, if it actually happens, uh, that I've heard in a while. Besides the buying a Bitcoin and holding Bitcoin, this is a massive tax benefit for US citizens if this were to go through that would, I think, bring a lot of money to Bitcoin. This is super attractive to any wealthy individual. If you don't mind, hit subscribe. Turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this. And I will apologize for the voice. <laughs> Three days of talking about nothing but business and crypto. This is what happens to you. So <laughs> I lost it the first day. But let's get into it. If you want to trade crypto, there is a link to Margex underneath the video where you can start trading crypto today. As you can see, Bitcoin touched 70K, 70K, and we are doing really well. I opened this position, as I've been talking about a, uh, a couple weeks ago, on the 4th of July, where I put two Solana in at 12X. I put two Solana as collateral for a Bitcoin trade. Since then, we're up 254%. And that doesn't account for the increase in the value of Solana. So that is awesome. We're up 254% in terms of our Solana. So we put two in. We now have over seven. And Solana has also gone up in value. Just look at this. Coin market cap shows that Solana is now worth 100. And actually, it's higher than this because sometimes this takes a second. Yep, $191. So we got in at 130. Now it's 191, and we've also gotten a 3.5x, or let's actually do this, a 250% gain. So we're actually up about 367%. Just nuts, just nuts. What can happen when you use different forms of collateral, which as far as I know, you can only do that on Margex. So definitely check this out underneath the video. There's also a link to CoinW. Uh, if you... We're in on this airdrop, this hamster airdrop. Make sure you claim your tokens. Uh, I thought there was an automatic thing, but now it looks like you have to claim them. So make sure you do that. I believe it's pretty easy. I'll put it in the next video. So let's look at this. U.S. national debt just passed $35 trillion. Pretty good timing, I'd say, with the Bitcoin conference. Uh, it's very important to have your hands on something that's not super inflationary uh, that grows in value because otherwise you will continue to lose value. And obviously Bitcoin fits that exact uh, criteria. Now I want to play something from Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And then we'll get to Will's like a uh, warning short term. But Yesterday, I covered game theory and what's happening, and that is that Louisiana is now talking about grabbing a strategic reserve or strategic stockpile of Bitcoin, like Donald Trump suggests. Texas is also saying, or some people are saying Texas should do the same thing. This is the lead or the uh, VP of research at Riot, which is a big Bitcoin miner. But uh, now we're talking about states following the lead of countries buying and holding Bitcoin. I did not, I was not able to see Robert F. Kennedy Jr. when he gave his speech at the Bitcoin conference. So I want to play that for you because President Trump is not even the person that's most bullish on Bitcoin and is willing to do the most for Bitcoin. Robert said that he'd do even more. So let me play this for you. To sign an executive order on day one directing the Department of Justice and the U.S. Marshals to transfer the approximately 200,000 Bitcoin held by the U.S. government to the United States Treasury, where it will be held as a strategic asset. Keep in mind, this is before Trump's speech. On day one as president. I will sign another executive order directing the U.S. Treasury 
to purchase 550 Bitcoin daily until the U.S. has built a reserve of at least 4 million Bitcoins. And and a position of dominance that no other country will be able to usurp. Our nation holds approximately 19% of global gold reserves. This policy will give us about the same proportion of total Bitcoin. The cascading impact from these actions will eventually move Bitcoin to a valuation of hundreds of trillions of dollars. On day one as president, I will sign also an executive order directing the IRS to issue public guidelines that all transactions between Bitcoin and the U.S. dollar are unreportable transactions. And by extension, non-tax. On day one as president, I will also sign an executive order directing the IRS to treat Bitcoin as an eligible asset. This is crazy. 31 exchange into real property. <clears throat> okay, so what what he said at the end is very important. He said that it would be eligible for a 1031 exchange. Now, I don't know if this is a two-way eligibility or what, but if you don't know what a 1031 exchange is, it's basically that you can go from one property that you own to another. You can basically sell the one that you own and then transfer that equity into another property without being taxed. So if you happen to invest in California and you make a million dollars on a house, you can 1031 exchange that into maybe you want to move into uh, somewhere in the Midwest and you buy a bunch of cash flowing rentals there. You can do that without having to pay taxes. What he's talking about is being able to 1031 exchange from, I believe, from real estate into Bitcoin, maybe vice versa as well. But imagine that someone has some property, a million dollars worth of property. They want Bitcoin, but they don't really want to pay the taxes because they bought at a very low cost. So... Now they can 1031 exchange, basically rotate all that equity into Bitcoin tax-free. Imagine if it was the other way as well, where you could buy Bitcoin and then you could put some into property. And that just creates a lot of incentive to invest in tax, uh, in Bitcoin and makes it so that it's closer to property with some of the tax benefits of property. Now, of course, if you allow it to go from Bitcoin to property, people will also be more likely to sell Bitcoin if they see some some investment opportunity in real estate. But keep in mind that will also allow more people to invest in Bitcoin in the first place because they realize that's an option. So this is really interesting. I have not heard anyone talk about making Bitcoin eligible for 1031 exchanges. And I think Obviously, Kennedy is the most pro-Bitcoin, pro-crypto candidate right now. He would be the best for our bags. Now, is he going to become president? At this rate, doesn't look like it. Maybe a 1% chance, 1% of votes. But still, there are people that are throwing out ideas from that are in positions of power that are trying to become the president that are very bullish for Bitcoin. Go from where we were four years ago or... You know, Trump was even talking about not liking Bitcoin. He didn't like it. He liked the U.S. dollar, right? Uh, to now, Trump being very pro-Bitcoin, speaking about Bitcoin, and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. being the most bullish candidate that has any chance of winning, right? Like, at least he's in the race, kind of, right? People know him. This is crazy. <laughs> it's a massive change. So... I think we want to be on the right side of that change. Right now, Bitcoin's moving up. It's it's come down about $1,000 since it hit 70. You know, getting rejected a bit there. But overall, we're looking really good. I was actually surprised. If you had said you have to pick whether we go up or down at the, from the Bitcoin conference, I would have said down. Because typically, every year in the past, I remember, we have a 
pretty big lead up to the conference and then we fall down after. Right now, it looks like the market really likes everything that it heard at the conference. Now, there's one other thing that I would talk about. Will Clemente, researcher, very well-respected person in crypto, says in the short term, it's a bit concerning to see so many people suddenly become so openly interested in internet coins. Now, what's he talking about? Well, there's the price of Bitcoin and then this, which is the aggregate, the aggregated open interest, which just so everyone's on the same page, open interest in crypto is a metric that tracks the total number of open positions in a specific cryptocurrency contract. It's calculated by adding up all open trades and subtracting contracts that are closed. It's different than trading volume, which tracks the total number of shares in contract traded over a certain time. Basically, this just shows how, you know, how much is bedded on the market, which means there could be volatility. Right? This isn't necessarily longs or necessarily shorts, but this just shows that you know we're in store for some volatility, which could be good, could be bad. But he does say this is a bit concerning, and you know this peaking and going up drastically right when the market's going up tells you probably it's long positions, right? So we may see some liquidations. Even like let's look right now, crypto liquidations. Over the last hour, I bet it's pretty large. We have about 16 million in the last hour being liquidated. Actually, over the last day, we have more shorts than longs liquidated, which makes sense because we are up significantly since even yesterday. But yeah, just be careful. Be ready for anything. Be ready for some volatility. If you do want to trade this market, if you're like, okay, well, we just pulled back $1,200. We've heard nothing but bullish stuff, it seems like. Maybe I want to go long. Or maybe you're saying, hey, we are overextended. Maybe I think we're going to keep on falling down. We're going to see more short liquidations. Well, you can also short the market on Marjex. So, of course, always do your own research. If you just want to if you just want to hold, I totally get it, right? We are in store for a crazy next year. If you didn't go to the Bitcoin conference this year, I would see if you could make it work next year, especially with where the cycles are going to be uh, with what it looks like we're going to do in the next year. I think that that might be the most fun conference that we've ever been to or ever seen. Like it's not it's not a boring conference. I would make sure that you maybe go with someone that likes crypto. Make sure that you're going to satellite events. Make sure that you uh it's actually in Vegas too. So it will be a fun time. Like if you are someone that likes Vegas or just likes to go see events, goes and likes to drink or, you know, go to casinos or whatever. Not much of a casino guy myself, because honestly, uh, I feel like I can do that in crypto and I have a better chance at winning. But let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll get back to the normal, uh, the normal videos now that we're back in the office. Appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.